Greetings everyone, hope you're all keeping well out there, as I'm sure you all know by now. My name is Alex and today we are checking out the UV CPE 450 Long Distance Wireless Bridge. Now in my house where I live, I have constant issues with Wi-Fi coverage. So when UV got in touch with us and gave us the opportunity to try out their long distance wireless bridge, I was quite literally ecstatic. So we're gonna dive straight in with the unboxing and then I'm gonna go through some of the specifications. I'm gonna show you how to set it up and then of course we are gonna try it out ourselves. How do I open this up? There we go, it's a little flaps around the side and hey presto, we are now inside. And the first thing we come across is the UV wireless bridge user manual. And we'll just have a quick look at this. Yep, we've got some color pictures there, lots of useful diagrams, and um, plenty of information on basically just how to set this thing up. We then have not one, but two Cat5 Ethernet cables. And then I can imagine these are the power bricks. And there we go. Yes, nothing else in there. But well, let's just take a quick look at this. So, yeah, it's a standard power brick. Of course, it's got a little LED indicator on the outside. And then, of course, on the top, we've got the PoE and then the LAN inputs and outputs. And then, last but not least, we come to the actual transmitters themselves. So, we can just pull them out momentarily. I'm going to push that box to one side. And, um, well, there they are. And, um, well, what do you think? The first thing I'm going to say is... Well, they are light. They are incredibly light. It's almost, they just feel like two boxes of plastic. Not that I'm taking anything away from the design. All that's really needed is just a transmitter in there as well as a connection box, which I believe will be in here. And yes, it is. So there isn't really much in terms of components required, but I really am surprised just how light it is. And I'll just take this one off as well. As you can see, it's really simple. And then place these next to each other. And you can see that they are pretty much identical. You've got your inputs with the Ethernet or outputs as well. You've also got a switch on the right-hand side. You've got a switch beneath the numerical display. And then, of course, on the left-hand side, you have a uh, DC input. And then on the back, we do have a couple of mounting brackets. So that will obviously make it a whole lot easier for when you are mounting these high up in order to get the best signal. And then last but not least, on each side, we also have a indicator for the signal strength, etc. All there, ready to be illuminated when this is in use. So as you can see, that is everything out of the box and there isn't really much else to say because what UV have set out to do is to basically make the setup and use of these transmitters as simplistic as possible. And because there's so many different things that can happen when you're messing around with your internet options, your Wi-Fi protocols, it all can get really, really complicated. But hopefully with this simplistic setup, we'll be up and running with our Wi-Fi extended within just a few minutes. But first and foremost, let me just quickly go through some specifications for you all. And kicking off, it uses the 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi network band, which can work up to a staggering three kilometers or 1.8 miles in perfect conditions. The transmission speed between the two bridges is a maximum of 300 megabytes per second. However, please note the highest network speed that can be achieved is up to 100 megabytes per second. The power supply required to run these is 24 volts. And in terms of some of the actual features that are worth mentioning, well, it has automatic networking. It supports point-to-point -point as well as point-to-multipoint connections. It's got the WDS networking mode, as well as supporting dynamic MMO power saving mode, plus with automatic power saving transmission. And so here we go with the initial setup process. So the first thing to do is we grab our transmitter and we're gonna take off the end like so, and just get this off. There we go. And then where the button is just situated underneath the little LED, you want to make sure that is set into the A position because underneath the switch is an A and a B. So you want to make sure that is set to A. You can now grab your power adapter and where it says POE, I want you to connect an ethernet cable into that socket like so. And of course, that means you can now plug this in here. And straight away you will see a little LED light up showing that it is connected and it is receiving power. 
And with that now confirmed that it is receiving power, we can pick up our transmitter that we've switched to A, and we can plug it into the Ethernet connector, like so. And as you can see, it lights up. Now after a minute or so, once it has uh, collaborated itself, it should flash up with the letter H. And there we have it, the letter H is flashing. And basically what that means is that this transmitter is now in manual configuration mode. So what we need to do now is to confirm a channel number. Now, if you press the little button just on the left where you've plugged in the ethernet cable, if you press that, you'll go through the channels and you can pick one that is best suited for your needs. Now, in this situation, I'm just gonna pick one at random, so I'm gonna go for number five. And with that all now ready to go, we can now move on to the next transmitter and set that one up. So like before, we take the back off just by clicking this and pulling it off. And then with the switch underneath the little LED, we want to make sure this, the second transmitter, is set into the B mode, which once more is just underneath there. And yes, that is now in B mode. Then once more, we can get our power brick and we get another Ethernet cable. We plug that into our POE once more, and then we connect that to a power supply. And there we go, it has little green, which shows that it is working. And then again, we just plug in the ethernet cable into the B selected transmitter. And then like before, as you can see, it is flashing up H, which is in manual configuration mode. And we wanna now change the channel number so it matches the same as the original A transmitter. So if you remember, we went to channel five. So we're gonna press the little button here. And there we go. And after about another minute or so, it should stop flashing and it will just show a solid number five, which shows that it is all connected. And there we have it, they are now both solid, which means that there is a connection going between them. But there isn't actually any internet coming from them because there's no internet source connected to it. So to do that, what we then do is go back to our original A transmitter and we get another Ethernet cable and then we plug it into either the second socket on the A transmitter or you can plug it into the second socket of your original a power adapter but for this demonstration we're going to plug it in here just so you can see it all in action and that one is now plugged into there and then we take the end of that ethernet cable that we've just plugged into the a transmitter and we're going to plug this into the modem or router that you have set up which will provide the internet so this is just my home router and i'm going to plug it in to one of the available slots and that is now in and then if we wait about two minutes or so, we should be able to pick up a wireless signal that has been produced from A and going to B. And just to prove to you that it is all set up and working, I've got this iPhone here and we're gonna to connect to it wirelessly. So here we go, settings, go to Wi-Fi, I'm gonna switch it on and then hopefully we shall pick up the network. And there it is. Now, as you can see, the code there or the SSID name for the network is CPE 5G underscore 5G149. Now, to connect to that, it is going to ask for a password. And to find the password, we go back to the user manual and we go to page seven, if I remember correctly. And as you'll see here on the top left hand side, it says Wi Fi SSID and it comes up with CPE 5G and then the 5G triple x now the triple x is because it won't know what channel you have selected because depending on the channel in this case number five that will change the last three digits of the ssid so because we've chose channel five it has gone to 149 and then it gives us the first part of the password but then we need to find out what the last three letters are and we can again do this in the instruction manual so here we go we are channel five there we are and there is the corresponding 149 that is being shown at the end of the SSID. And what we need to do now is to just scroll along there and then we get the password. So we'll just do that now by clicking on it. It'll ask for the password. We'll join that network. And there you have it. You have a brilliant, nice and fast internet or Wi-Fi connection currently running around the 88 megabytes per second. And then of course, this will switch to the upload as well, which is around 12, 13, 14, 15. Well, it even goes up to 19, 20 megabytes per second there. 
For the second part of the demonstration though, I would now like to show you how you can log in to the interface of the wireless bridge and then you can play around with the settings, whether it be changing something simple like the SSID name, the password, there really is a hell of a lot of stuff that you can play around with. So with your connection set up like in the earlier demonstration, you now want to connect either a laptop or PC via an ethernet cable to the second port on the B transmitter. Once you have done this, depending on the channel number you have chosen to set up your bridge on, go to the user manual and find the digital IP and Wi-Fi correspondence chart. Once found, scroll down to your channel number and then look at the IP address for transmitter A, which should be situated next to it. In this case, it is 192.168.255.102. And now you need to just make a note of it. The next step is to access your internet settings. Now, depending on your version of Windows, the steps may be slightly different, but for me, I go to the bottom right-hand corner of the screen and right-click over the internet icon and then click on network and internet settings. I then choose advanced network settings, click on ethernet, and then click on the edit button next to more adapter options. A new window should now pop up entitled Ethernet Properties, and you want to find Internet Protocol version 4. Once found, just click to highlight it and then hit the Properties button beneath it. In the additional new pop-up window, you now want to select Use the following IP address. Then choose an appropriate IP address that is different from your transmitter's Wi-Fi address. For this example, I'll choose 192 dot one six eight dot two five five dot eight five once entered click on the subnet mask beneath it and the numbers two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero should appear if not you can just enter them manually and finally you should now open an internet browser page and in the address bar you need to type the address that you made a note of earlier for transmitter a which was 192.168.255.105. After a moment or so, the user interface should appear on your screen and ask for some login details. Don't worry, they are just admin for username and admin for password. And once you are here, you can see there is plenty of settings, additional options, etc., for you to personalize for not only your own preference, but also for the best experience. Just remember that once you have made all your adjustments, that you go back to your internet settings and change them all to as they were when you found them, aka obtain an IP address automatically. Now, the only thing I can't show you with these transmitters is unfortunately the long distance range because I don't know anyone who lives close enough for me to try it out with. One thing though I will say about the UV wireless bridge adapter, and it is quite astonishing really, but I have had these set up as a repeater. And I've had this one in the office, and then I've gone downstairs and had the second one set up in our dining room. And no matter where I go, in the house, in the yard, you name it, I can get a fantastically strong Wi-Fi signal. But to summarize, or overall, what can I say about the UV CPE 450 wireless bridge adapter? Well, personally, I know I couldn't show you everything that I wanted to in the demonstration, but I really am very happy with these and would definitely recommend them. And once it's set up, you can just utilize it any way that you need. And it really is just a great bit of kit. I would also like to say just thank you to UV for supplying these samples. And yes, even though they did supply them for this video, it makes no difference in my opinion, and that remains completely impartial in this review. However, as usual, before I go, if you've got any questions or comments or even thoughts that you'd like to ask me about the UV CPE 450 wireless bridge adapter, then you know what to do. Place them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Not to mention, if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, then please show your support to the channel by liking this video and of course, subscribing as well. But until next time, thank you all very much for watching and I'll hopefully see you at some point very soon. Thank you.